So we're going to start today <coughs> discussing multi-phase flow. I think uh, Dr. Balhoff on Tuesday probably got at least partially through deriving uh, the conservation of mass equations for the three phases. And that was probably very, very long and boring and tedious. And I'm actually glad I missed that lecture. Um, these are the things that we've talked about so far. This is also at a very, very high level, uh, a topic of things that could be open game on your, on your exam. So uh, we use conservation of mass. That, another word for conservation of mass is continuity. So we derive a continuity and then um, with some assumptions on top of that, we came to the diffusivity equation or the heat equation, right? Um, from the heat equation, we derived directly the finite difference approximations. And you know, one advantage to der deriving the finite difference approximations is that we can see exactly what the errors are, right? As opposed to when we do the more direct approach of using that control volume. So we, we don't know what the errors are associated with our discretization. So the f we, we derived them from the PDEs. Uh, we discretized the PDE uh, via the finite differences. Um, also, we covered the finite volumes, uh, sort of control volume approach. Um, we included heterogeneities. We did all of that in 1D. We wrote a, a, your homework for, right? It was a 1D code with including heterogeneities and, and other things. Um, and then we extended that to 2D or multi multiple dimensions. Uh, and then we, in 2D, we added wells and we talked about boundary conditions and other things. Okay. So in multi-phase flow, right, there are sort of two major uh, approaches to multi-phase flow. The first of which is the more accurate is compositional flow. So in a compositional flow, you're going to include every component you know, every piece of matter in the mixture. So, uh, you know, your ethane, butane, propane, every single uh, component in there, and you're going to write conservation of mass based on those compo components, right, on the sort of molar volume fractions of those guys. Um, and, yeah, so I, I guess I'll wait to talk about phases till the black oil, but anyway. Uh, the, the point is we, we balance on the component, not on the phase. And you can have components in multiple phases. So you can have gases that are dissolved in the oil phase, and, and you can have volatilized oil in the gas phase, right, in the gas phase. So anyway, um, that's a compositional approach. Their compositional uh, models are typically only in the sort of most um, advanced Reservoir simulators, uh, CMG is one of those. It does have a compositional flow model in it, okay, if you want to do it. We won't do that at all in this class, okay? So the only one we will care about or, or uh, worry about is the black oil model. So in the black oil model, we have three components, oil, gas, and water, and also three phases. And in a lot of the literature, you'll, you'll just see the three phases also called oil, gas, and water. And you sort of just have to keep them s straight by if you're talking about the oil phase or the gas phase. So what Dr. Lake did uh, in his book and in, in, in the classes probably you've had from him <coughs> is introduce a slightly different terminology to aid in keeping it straight. So uh, he calls the oil phase uh, the, what's the exact pronunciation? O oilic phase or o oleic, oleic, oleic phase. Uh, the aqueous phase and the gaseous phase. <coughs> okay, and so again, we're going to balance. We're going to balance on the component uh, on the components, oil, gas, and water. But we will allow at least the gas to be in multiple phases. So you can have dissolved gas in your oil, or you can have gas in the gas gaseous phase. And I just did it. Uh, I probably will have a hard time saying, uh, you know keeping it straight. Uh, I'll, I'll try my best, but you can have this also, I'll say it again. You can have dissolved gas in the oleic phase, <laughs> oleic phase, uh, or you can have gas in the gaseous phase. Okay. 
right? So this is sort of going back over what I said. You can have a gas component in oil or flowing separately, and gas does not, these are the assumptions we're making in this black oil model. Gas does not dissolve in the water when the water and oil don't mix. And in general, you could have volatilized oil in the gas phase, but then it's not, if, if, if there's a significant amount of that, right? If there's a significant amount of volatilized oil in the gas phase, then you really have a light oil and not a black oil, right? Hence, the definition of black oil is, is, a, is an oil that, that you know, is, is, has a very little volatilized uh, oil in the gas phase. So later on, when we start to look at the equations, we'll always make the assumption that the volatilized oil in the gas phase is zero. And so some of the ratios that come out of that will also be zero. All right. So